ERS, short for Energy Recovery System, is a system that works together with the internal combustion engine to produce a more powerful and efficient power unit. The following animation will explore how ERS works and how teams utilize it in various conditions to optimize performance and efficiency on the track. The ERS comprises of the following components. The MGUK or Motor Generator Unit Kinetic serves as both a generator and a motor. As a generator, it harnesses kinetic energy from braking through a process called electromagnetic induction, where rotating magnets inside the unit induce an electric current in coils of wire. This electrical energy is then stored in the car's battery for future deployment. Conversely, when functioning as a motor, it draws electrical energy from the battery to provide up to 160 horsepower to the crankshaft once the car is over 100 km an hour. Under the current regulations, the maximum energy recoverable per lap by the MGUK is 2 megajoules, which is enough energy to charge your phone over 40 times. The next component is the MGUH or Motor Generator Unit Heat, which uses heat from the hot exhaust gases to drive the unit. Like the MGUK, the MGUH can also work as a generator to harvest electricity or be used as a motor to spool up the turbo faster and reduce turbo lag. It can also send and receive energy directly to the MGUK, and unlike the MGUK, there's no limit to how much energy can be harvested by the MGUH. Energy that is generated by the MGUs has to pass through a component called the Control Electronics, or CE, before it can be stored in the battery. This unit converts AC power from the MGUs to DC power for storage and vice versa when transferring energy from the battery to spin the MGUs. Since there are two MGUs, one for kinetic and the other for heat, there are also two CEs which independently handle the relevant MGU. Energy that is converted by the control electronics is then stored inside the energy store or ES. The rules allow up to 4 megajoules of energy per lap to transfer from the ES to the MGUK, which at peak deployment will last around 33 seconds. Since batteries deteriorate over time, the energy store has to have a capacity greater than 4 megajoules, so even towards the end of their life, they can still hold 4 megajoules of energy. However, the extra capacity cannot be too much, as it still has to fall within the 20 to 25 kilogram weight limit to conform with regulations. All of these components are managed millions of times per second by the ECU, which can be fine-tuned via the steering wheel. With a turn of a dial, the driver has control over how energy is spent or saved. This dial is commonly referred to as STRAT, meaning strategy or SOC for state of charge, and contains profiles that are programmed to harvest and deploy varying amounts of energy at different points on track. In addition, drivers also have access to an overtake button, which overrides the strap profile and deploys maximum power when pressed. Energy deployment is strategically focused on corner exits to maximize acceleration and momentum, thus reducing the overall time spent on the straight. It's also common to cease deployment before reaching the braking zone, as the marginal gains within that short window are minimal. This is due to greater air resistance the faster a car travels, demanding a lot more power to go slightly faster. Therefore, it can be more advantageous to hold deployment earlier, harvest some energy, and repeat the deployment pattern on the next straight for optimal lap time. Holding deployment early is known as D-rate and is more prominent in a race as opposed to a hot lap. As in a hot lap, the goal is to be fast over a single lap, so depleting the entire battery is not really a concern. Whereas in a race, a more frugal use of energy will have to be adopted for continuous laps, especially on longer tracks with lengthy straights such as Baku. Energy management can be really tricky. As such, drivers may sometimes run into earlier than expected D rates. This may happen when an ERS profile is miscalibrated, resulting in the MGUK cutting out earlier than intended. This can be mitigated by spreading out deployment over a longer period of time, as well as doing more rigorous testing beforehand to account for more variables that can happen over the course of a race. 
So that's been a general breakdown of how the hybrid system works. I hope this video was informative and as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.